Hey, my name is Bo. I appreciate you being here, so I'm not going to waste your time. Today, I want to share with you how you can start attracting more abundance in your life by releasing shame. This is something that I have struggled with a lot in the past, and I've had a lot of insights on this, so I want to share some things that might be helpful for you. So what I've realized is that self-sabotage comes from a feeling of shame. So I've had a pattern in my life of self-sabotage. So you might recognize this in yourself as well, where you start something new, you have a goal or something you want to achieve, whether that's a business or a health goal or whatever, and you start moving down that path and you start making a little bit of progress, but then you find yourself slipping back into old patterns and sabotaging yourself. And I've noticed this so many times in my life where I've built something like I've created a product or something that I put out into the world and then like I feel ashamed or embarrassed of it. So then I'll like delete it. I'll just take it down. I've made videos, put them out on YouTube and then looked at those videos later on and I'm like, ah, oh, that's cringy. I'm, I'm embarrassed of that video. Even if it was helping people and even if people kind of liked it, I would still feel like shameful almost and be be like that needs to go down. I can't let people see that. And so that's a form of self-sabotage where you take one step forward and then you take a step back and you go right back to your comfort zone. You go right back to what's familiar and you don't allow yourself to make progress in life. And why is that? It's because deep down you have a feeling like you're not worthy of it. You're not worthy of the success you desire. And deep down you feel like why even bother trying because you're not going to be successful anyway. You have this core belief that you're just going to fail anyway, so why bother trying? You're just going to be judged by everyone anyway, so why even try? It's just going to be painful, and it's going to be a struggle, and I'm probably going to fail no matter what, so why, sh why even bother, right? That's sort of the root belief that is there, and it's also that feeling of shame, that feeling of not accepting yourself for who you are, not loving and honoring yourself, and honoring Honoring the, the journey, you know, honoring the struggle in the beginning, honoring the awkward moments, you know, like some of the first YouTube videos I, I ever made were like the most awkward, cringy videos you could ever imagine. I think I deleted them permanently because they were so, they were so embarrassing, but I kind of wish I didn't delete them because it would be very interesting to see, you know, how far I've come over the years. So I'm going to give you seven steps today to start to release a feeling of shame so you can attract more abundance. Number one is own your insecurity. You have to own it. You have to admit to it. If you deny it, it's going to stay with you. Most people are afraid to admit that they're insecure, afraid to admit that they're afraid, afraid to admit that they have weaknesses. But if you're living in denial and you're never really facing the problem, then you could never solve the problem. So the first step in anything is awareness and just having awareness that, yes, I feel this way. I feel embarrassed of who I am. I'm ashamed of who I am. I don't like who I am. I'm not happy with myself. You know, and it's just owning that and admitting it. And that is a huge step forward. If you can just get that far, the rest is going to be so easy because most people are never even willing to just admit that they have some fault or weakness or insecurity. They're, they're pretending like they're someone they're not. They're pretending like they're perfect and that they don't have flaws. And you, ha you have to just see that it's not personal. It's just part of being human. We all have this. We all have the insecurities, the fears, the doubts, the hesitations, the feelings of unworthiness. It's not something that's unique to you. It's just part of the human experience. So you don't have to feel ashamed of your shame or feel ashamed of your faults or insecurities because it's just part of being human and it's something that you can't overcome. Number two is to recognize that you're giving all your power away to people who don't even know you at all. Who knows you better than you? Anyone? Does anyone know your thoughts and feelings and intentions better than you? No. Maybe God, you could say. I like to think of it like my life is between me and God. If you don't like the word God, you can say it's between me and myself. Your life is between you and you. And that is all that matters is really your relationship with yourself or your, your relationship with God, you could say. This has brought a lot more peace into my life because I used to be constantly afraid of people's judgments and criticisms and I was never really truly myself 
uh, in, in any situation. I wasn't really being myself at all because I was just afraid of being judged. And I thought that people's opinion of me was me. But then I started to question that and started to think, hmm, like, how do they know me better than I know me? Like, I know my thoughts. I know my intentions. I know I'm a good person. So, so why does it matter if someone else says I'm something else? Like, what gives them the authority to define me? It really comes down to liking who you are as a person. If you don't really like who you are and you're not making good decisions in your life, then you, you will tend to try to please other people because that gives you a more positive image of yourself because people give you positive feedback. And so even if you don't really like yourself, you can kind of kind of trick yourself into believing that you do like yourself because other people like you, you know? But if you like yourself and you truly love and accept yourself, then it does not matter whatsoever what anyone else thinks. If other people love you, cool. I love myself too. If other people hate you, cool. It doesn't matter because I love myself. It's like I'm not allowing your opinion of me to define me or affect me because I'm already happy with who I am. I know who I am. You don't. You only have an outside perspective of me. I have the full perspective of me. So that's something that has helped me a lot over the years is just having that perspective. Like my life is between me and me or me and God. What other people think of me, you know, I'll honor and respect their thoughts and maybe I can learn something from that. But at the end of the day, all that really matters is, am I happy with myself? Do I have pure intentions? Do I have a good heart? And if I do, then I have nothing to be ashamed of. If I'm doing the best that I can in my life and I truly have good intentions, and I think most people in this world do, most people in this world have genuinely good intentions, despite the mistakes and errors they might make, most people have pure intentions. And if you have pure intentions, then you can be proud of yourself and you don't have to feel that shame. You can love, honor, and respect yourself and honor that journey of going from where you are to where you want to be. The third step is to focus on the process and surrender the outcomes. A lot of times we trick ourselves into thinking that we have some sort of control over the outcomes in our life. And I've noticed myself doing this a lot. I have this tendency where I want to think about the future and really control my future and, and think of every little detail and how things might go right or wrong. And I realized that all that might be good in a sense where it kind of helps you plan for things. But at the end of the day, it's like, all that really matters is I'm doing the thing that I need to do and I'm doing it to the best of my ability. Like I could think all day long about uh, my goals with this YouTube channel, for example, and how many subscribers I want or how many videos I want to make or, or whatever. I can think about that all day long, but it's not going to change the fact that I need to just sit down and make the damn videos. Like, it's not going to change any of that. So if you want good things for your future, you need to just focus on doing good things in the present. It's really that simple. You already know what you need to do. It's like, we, we kind of complicate it, I think. A lot of people, they complicate things because they're kind of avoiding what is right in front of them. They're, they're trying to make it complicated because secretly, if it's complex, then it's difficult to do now, right? But if it's simple, then it's easy to do now. So we, we make things complex in our mind because we're secretly afraid of actually just doing the thing. If you get rid of that complexity and you stop thinking so much of the future and you just think about the process and what you need to do in your life right now today and you simplify your life in that way, then it's much easier to take action because you're not thinking about the things you can't control and therefore you don't feel the anxiety that comes from trying to control the things you can't control and you focus on what you can control. And when all of your life revolves around all the things you can control, that brings peace and calm to your life because you're in control of it. You're in control of what you do today. I'm in control of the process of making this video right now. I'm not in control of how many views this video gets or how well it does or, or whatever, but I'm in, pro I'm in control of the process of it. And so if I just focus on the process of making these videos, of doing the things that I need to do in my life to become better, then the outcomes will take care of themselves. My future will take care of itself. Good things will come to me on their own. I don't need to think about it or worry about it at all. If I'm being the best I can be in the present, then my future will take care of itself. And the same is true for you.
So number four is know that you're not alone. Know that everyone on this journey has the same feelings, has the same doubts, hesitations, anxieties when they're getting out of their comfort zone and they're doing something new and they're growing and evolving. Everyone has the fears and doubts and insecurities. And so you don't need to feel like you're you're all alone. I know a lot of people do though because they don't have a support system and a lot of people don't talk openly about these things. People don't talk openly about their fears and insecurities and doubts. And so we can kind of get this idea in our head that no one else understands us and that we're different from everyone else and that, you know, our path is is unique in some way when really it's not. We're all on this human experience. We're all trying to grow and evolve and do the best we can in every situation. We all have desires and and fears. And it's just that some people choose to face those fears, to overcome those obstacles. And some people choose to remain in their comfort zone. But at the end of the day, we're all human. And I think just having that perspective can kind of help us feel a little less alone. It can be helpful to find a like-minded community of people or just, you know, watch videos like this or whatever of people talking about these things to just to help you feel like you're not alone, to help you feel like it's okay and the, the challenges you're facing are totally normal and it's nothing to be ashamed of, it's nothing to be worried about. Because uh, if you feel negative things about your negative emotions, then it's going to keep those negative emotions trapped. So if you're like ashamed of your shame or you feel ashamed about your fear, then you're trapping the fear, you're keeping it there. The key is to love your fear. Not be ashamed of your fear, not to deny it. You have to own it, accept it, and that allows the fear to dissolve. Uh, When we think that we're different than everyone else around us, that makes us feel anxious about our fear or ashamed about our fear or uh, embarrassed about our anxiety or whatever. It's like we're stacking a negative emotion on top of another negative emotion, and that's that's keeping the negative energy alive. So we got to love and accept ourselves And just realizing that we're all on this journey together can kind of help speed up that process. The next step is to stop lying to yourself and telling yourself that everything is going to be okay if you keep just living the way you're living. If you keep allowing fear to control your decisions, you kind of got to give yourself some tough love and wake the F up. Your life is not going to change and it's not going to magically get better just because you say some positive words to yourself like it's going to be okay and everything's going to be fine and it'll all work itself out and the magical fairies will will come into my life at some point and and drop off everything that I need, you know, like that's not how life works. I see a lot of people, especially with uh, the law of attraction and stuff that's all popular nowadays, like people that get into the law of attraction A lot of people develop these belief systems like uh, they think that just everything is going to be fine and magical and I don't really have to do anything but just sit back and just allow it to happen. And it's like, I understand there's some of that that is true, but there's another perspective and it's a tough love perspective that I think is more true. It's taking responsibility and ownership for your life and realizing that things aren't going to change unless you change. And change happens now, not tomorrow. If you say it's going to happen someday, you're probably just lying to yourself. It's not going to happen. If you were going to do it, you would have done it already. You keep saying you're going to do it someday. When When is someday going to come? Why not now? Why not today? What's stopping you? You're making excuses, really. And so this is where we have to be a little tough with ourselves. We have to have the balance, be gentle with ourselves, love and accept ourselves, but also be tough with ourselves and and own up to the truth and stop living in denial. Stop pretending like things are better than they are. Maybe stop pretending like things are going to work out when they really aren't. And you've had the pattern of maybe things not working out. It's like, hmm, something has to change. And it's not going to be just wishful thinking that's going to change it. It's going to have to take real action. The next step is realizing that the opposite of these negative feelings that you might be feeling, the shame or embarrassment or feeling not good enough, realize that the opposite of that is courage and joy and and love and peace. And that is where you're headed. And so you have to kind of get excited about this journey, get excited about personal development and becoming better and going on this journey of personal growth and becoming the best you can be. Get excited about it because it can't lead anywhere negative. It's, it can't possibly lead anywhere you don't want to go. It can only lead 
to better things. It can only lead to a better life. It might be difficult at first. It might feel a little uncomfortable because you're, you're moving through challenges and obstacles. You're getting out of your comfort zone. But you have to know that at the end of the day, it's worth it. And most people never experience how good life can really be. And just know that on the other side of fear, there are many, many good things waiting for you. So finally, you have to act as if you already loved and respected yourself deeply, regardless of how you feel. As I talked about a little bit before, when we have a negative emotion and then we stack another negative emotion on top of it, that just keeps that negative emo emotion alive. It keeps that energy alive. So what we, we want to do is we want to bring love and acceptance to anything we're feeling. It doesn't matter what it is, fear, shame, embarrassment, anger, whatever. We have to learn how to stack love on top of those negative emotions and that will transmute them and dissolve them. Fear added on to Fear or shame or whatever is not going to create love. You can't create love with two negatives. The light washes out the darkness. You can't bring darkness to darkness and expect that to create light. This is not how it works. So no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're going through in life, just realize that it's okay. It's part of the journey. We're all learning. We're all trying to do the best we can. We're all getting better every single day. Own your life. Take responsibility for your life. The tough love is, is necessary, but it's still love. Tough love is still love. So these are seven steps you can take to start releasing some of that shame, fear, embarrassment, feeling not good enough. And when you start to do this, you're going to find that you start taking action in your life. You're not ashamed of the things you're creating and putting out into the world anymore. You're proud of yourself. You're happy with who you are. You're not looking to other people anymore for acceptance or approval because you're happy with yourself. You've accepted yourself. You're loving yourself. You're, you're honoring yourself. You're honoring the journey. You realize that life is between you and you. It's between you and God. And that's all that matters. And when you live that way, you will attract abundance into your life.